Hello, everyone, and welcome to Fearless Female Entrepreneurs, where you'll receive expert advice and inspiration from 20 fierce feminine leaders and entrepreneurial experts who want to help you supercharge your power as a feminine thought leader and ignite your own powerful rising. And today I'm speaking with Dr. Marie Mabuni. Welcome, Marie. Thank you so much for being a part of this event. Thank you. My honor. Yes, thank you so much. And so let me go ahead and welcome everybody who is joining us here. So as you are joining, please go ahead and put your name and location into the chat so we can see where everybody's calling in from today. It's a Saturday, so I wonder if we'll have a little, little bit of a different crowd today. So don't be shy. Go ahead and put your name and location in the chat. And welcome to Louise in Illinois. Tina in Oxford, UK, Berhard in Denmark, Lottie in Holland. Welcome, welcome everybody. And I know we have lots more people joining. So yeah, go ahead and continue putting your name and location in the chat. Hello, Alice in the Netherlands. Hi, Karen in Pennsylvania. Welcome, welcome everybody. So glad that you are spending this time with us here today. So let me introduce Marie to all of you. So Marie is an MD anesthesiologist and a mystic, shamanic, and energy healer, a spiritual guide, an author, facilitator of sacred ceremonies and retreats, creativity coach, and world traveler. She helps high achievers who have found themselves disconnected, overwhelmed, and alone at the top and have lost their passion and drive to find their true and higher purpose. She guides them in mastering their energy, intuition, creativity, and heart. Marie is the founder of Manifesting a New Matrix, Conscious Creativity Method, and Reclaim Your Soul Power, and has worked one-on-one -on -one with some of the top thought leaders of our time. She guides those all to serve at all stages of their development. Marie is the author of Reclaim Your Gifts and co-author of The New Feminine Evolutionary. And Marie is joining us from Costa Rica where she is leading a retreat right now. So I just want to thank you again, Marie, for making, making space to join us here. Thank you so much. And You're Marie. You're welcome. And it's a pleasure. Yes. <laughs> Wonderful. And I love your topic today. It is trust as a path to fearless female leadership. And I just can't wait to talk with you about all of this. So can you tell us, well, I, I would love to have you um, begin just by sharing a little bit of your story, because you're a medical doctor, but you're also doing all of this amazing healing work. So could you tell us how you came to, to be on this path? Mm, absolutely. And may I first share really quick where I am in Costa Rica? Oh, yeah, please do. Please. Do I have a moment? Yes, absolutely. So I'm just going to turn my computer around. It is so gorgeous. So beautiful. So I don't know if you can see that's like all around. It's the goal. That is just gorgeous. Thank you for sharing that. So beautiful. There. Yeah, you're very welcome. So, my journey, my journey has been, in essence, a journey of trust. Um, as a medical doctor and somebody who also has spiritual gifts, it was difficult to reconcile both parts of me. And what I was doing for a long time was saying no to that other part. I wanted to be a scientist. I wanted to be like everybody else. And, um, and I didn't really know what to expect. I didn't trust that part of me. And for a very long time, I felt completely disconnected because I was saying no to a huge part of me. And I was basically rejecting myself 
that's that's where it was coming you know that's what it was coming down to until 2012 where it was like i started having spiritual pressure it was like you have to do this you have to reclaim your spiritual path and and of course i didn't even know what that would look like and as a scientist as you all know we like facts this is how it's going to be this is how uh you know you're going to have a plus b equals c and and the reality is that it doesn't actually have to be that way so as i was forced to go on my spiritual path i started realizing that when i'm really in my power i can open up to different ways of solving problems, to different ways of sourcing information, to different ways of creating my reality. And, and that requires trust. And trust for me meant taking leaps, right? Without knowing necessarily and doing everything I could to feel like I had done my work and then trusting that when I actually take action steps, when I actually leave, when I actually decide, I would receive the expected result. So it's, it's been a journey because I had to completely reformulate the way I think, the way I see, and uh, realizing that stepping into trust doesn't mean that you're weak and it doesn't mean you're airy-fairy. It means that you are operating with a different system. And, and that's what I want to offer here today. Yeah, this is such an important message for everybody on this call because we're all at various levels of, you know, diving into this, this trust in ourselves and this trust in our, our intuition and our spiritual guidance. And it can be so hard to follow that in this modern world that is, you know, so based on science and logic and, you know, have a, you know, build your solid financially stable career and all of that. Right. Um, so yeah, thank you, Marie, for modeling this for us and, and speaking about it today. So can you tell us a little bit more about trust? Why, why is this so important? And, and also how does it, how does it help us to become fearless? Because fearless female entrepreneurs is the name of our, our event. And I feel like that's such an important part of it too. So when I was meditating about what I was going to talk about, the thing that kept coming was trust. And, you know, the definition of an entrepreneur in essence is that you are actually not always certain. You take risks, you, you build models, you, you make decisions. And, and the thing is, in order to be a fearless, successful entrepreneur, you need to have unshakable trust in your decisions. Sometimes you have to make decisions in a split of a second. And if you don't have that inner trust from the practices that you create, you will always operate from fear. Like your decisions are going to be based on fear. I'm going to do this because I don't want that to happen. I'm going to do this because I'm afraid that in that level of operation, you cannot be successful because it's basically reacting right? You're actually not acting. You, you're not proactive. And fear paralyzes the entrepreneur. And if you second guess yourself every time you make a decision, you cannot have a vision, right? When you step into trust, you can start going inward and creating the vision of your entrepreneurship. This is where I'm going. And you're able to hold that vision. You're able to know without a doubt that everything you're doing is taking you there. 
that's why I think that trust is the basis of any successful entrepreneur. Trust in yourself, trust in your inner guidance. If you have something bigger than you, source, energy, God, Allah, whatever you call it, you're also able to trust that. And I don't think you can live without trusting yourself or your inner guidance. So the second part of the question was that when I, when I think about myself um, and my history, my journey of trust, it was about healing the spaces where my trust was broken because um, we learn how not to trust but what happens to us. And I went as deep as when I was a child where I would decide that I want to do this. And then I would be told, no, that's not good enough. And, and basically fear is a learned process. It's a learned habit. You know, your parents or your friends who are supposed to be the, you know, the people you trust the most. And maybe one day they do something that breaks that trust and these are usually the people that you depend upon and when that trust is broken it creates a wound inside yourself where you start doubting yourself you start going into fear and you start learning that this is actually not possible because if the people that you trust the most are able to break that trust i mean whom can you trust right and I want to ask everybody here, how many times have you known what to do and yet you didn't do it? How many times have you known instinctively what to do and you doubted yourself and you second guessed yourself? And then later it's like, oh my gosh, I should have done this. How many times I have done that myself? Many times where I know what to do and, and then it's like, wait, this is not what, you know, I took that course and it said you should go from A to C and how many times? Lots and lots. We all operate from fear. Yeah. 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 And, and so I really want to bring everybody's attention to the fact that you need to go and reclaim that trust in yourself. That's how you're going to stop operating from fear. Fear is at the lowest vibrational scale and it creates so much stress. You have fog, you cannot think clearly. Yeah. If you can't think clearly, you can't make decisions that are really, really based on your inner power. Yes. Yeah, I and I think something that's um, coming up for me that feels also important as related to this is that trust um, does not only lead us to perfect scenarios either, right? Sometimes we trust and we follow something and it doesn't turn out right. But when we hold that trust, we can see that it's all for some larger plan, right? That we can't always fully comprehend, but that we're being led on a journey and our mistakes or our failures are huge learning experiences. So we can, even if it's not, if it didn't turn out the way we thought it would or wanted it to, we can still keep that trust. Mm. Wow, you know what, Jocelyn, I'm so happy that you talked about that. The thing is, you know, what we call mistakes are sometimes, you know, expectations that we have that we think are good. And then when we don't meet those expectations that we created with our brain, then we like, oh, it was a mistake. I shouldn't, and then we like, I shouldn't have trusted that. But how do you know that 
the expectation that you have is actually the right one for your business, your entrepreneurship. How did you create that goal? Was it from a place of fear? Like, oh my God, I need money to pay my debt. And, and usually it's like, okay, so when you pay your debt, you're just going to come to zero, right? Like you actually don't have anything minus the debt. And then you get the money to pay the debt. It, it's zero, right? It's not even balanced. So the goal is not like the goal should have been, for example, I want to have enough. And instead you said, I want to pay my debt. So then you pay your debt and it's like, wait, I still don't have money. It's like, I shouldn't have done that. Was that the right goal? How did you create your vision? How did you create, you know, your plan? You know, was it from a place of empowered knowingness that I am worthy of having the business that I desire? And from that place, I am seeing, like, I can have, like, the world if that's what I desire or did you keep yourself like tone it down like I just want this and I just want that how many times do you say I just want this that's not a place of fullness that's actually a place of smallness keeping yourself small and 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 from a place of fear like if I ask too much maybe I'm not gonna have it mm -hmm. so we can think it's a mistake, but actually we are not operating from that place of trusting that if you are being led to be an entrepreneur, that is fearless. You can really create your life from a place of power, from a place of fullness, and you can ask for what you want, knowing that you can receive it. And then surrendering the how, that's a big part of the trust. You need to surrender. Like this is how it's going to happen. And allow yourself to be guided. Everybody who is here has superpowers. If not, you wouldn't be, you know, listening to Jocelyn, right? Allowing those powers to come online. So you can do magic. Yeah, I love that. Everybody here definitely has superpowers. I, I can feel it and I have no doubt, <laughs> no doubt yeah. in my mind. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for pointing that out to us, Marie. Yeah. So could you tell us about how trust can help us reclaim our untapped power? So, <clears throat> This is a big one, and I think I was already starting to allude to that. Every time we have our trust broken, and we have had our trust broken many times since the beginning of time, since Adam and Eve's story where it's like she ate the apple and she did something bad or whatever. Like We have had broken trust, our parents, our friends, our relationships, our school, our governments, Google, Facebook. How many times have we had our trust broken? A lot. So every time you get your trust broken, you get a wound. And that wound lives on your body. And we store those wounds and we suppress, we think, oh, well, you know, this is what it is, or we, we think we have resolved it. And every time we have a wound, there is a little bit of our power that gets robbed, that gets broken down, that, you know, gets like shattered until at some point, you know, it's like trapped power in bodies, emotional body, physical body. Like sometimes you can even have a sensation like when you have fear, like butterfly in the stomach. And one thing that I want to tell everybody is that if, if you are able to start a practice of connecting to yourself, to your body, and in meditation or in connection to yourself, however you want to 
Amen. I invite you to ask your body where it has a wound of trust, where your trust has been broken. Where is it storing that in your body? And as your body tells you, because it will, or you will feel like, oh, I want to place my hand here. It's my belly. It's my leg. It's my knee. Or your whole body, depending on your story. You can actually ask your body to help you release and reclaim that power. You can, if you can, send love and forgiveness to those places. Forgiveness is very, very important because the, the other part of this equation is that most of the times we hold ourselves responsible. I shouldn't have trusted that person. I shouldn't have told them my secret. I shouldn't have, right? Which means we're blaming ourselves. So one part is allowing your body to show you where it holds it. And the second part is forgiving yourself, really having a forgiveness practice of yourself. And this will help you. And somebody mentioned, you know, sending love to those places. And number one, really finding where it is in your body and placing your hands, sending love, asking for forgiveness. And you're going to be amazed. You do it many times and you're going to be amazed how much trapped power you actually have. Because our trust is broken all the time. And if we don't do this, what happens is we start creating barriers. Like we, we, we guard ourselves. We, we, we fearful. We, we don't open up to opportunities, to expansion, to collaboration, right? And as an entrepreneur, you need to be able to collaborate. You need to be able to be open to receiving, you know, the opportunities that come. Yeah. Yes. And this, um, what you've shared here about asking our bodies, that's so powerful because our, our bodies hold this profound wisdom. Our bodies are always trying to speak to us and, and help us and guide us. And so often we, um, you know, we don't listen or we don't, we just don't fully realize all that is there and all that's possible to, to be learned from our bodies. So this way of tuning in, asking where the pain is, asking where the wound might be, and then sending love and forgiveness there is so, so powerful. So thank you for that. And I think Marie, oh, I think we lost connection with Marie here. I'm going to pause the recording. And <laughs> I was just starting to email you. Yes, okay. I was... Yeah, I was, um, I was just saying that this, this part about, you know, accessing the wisdom of our bodies is so important because we forget to do that. You know, we know this, we know that our bodies are trying to tell us important things and, and help us. And then we, you know, we don't tap into them. And so this practice that you've just given us is really powerful. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Uh, I have it's a practice that I do myself because the, the reality is that we are told, um, we are actually taught to suppress a lot, suppress our emotions, suppress what we want to do. So it's, it's so liberating and, and it's, it's creates freedom for yourself and freedom is one of the cornerstones of being an entrepreneur. Um, yes. So, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I know you, you also have said that through trust, we can access higher multidimensional guidance. So can you share about that? Because that is such an important part of, of being an entrepreneur, is being able to receive that guidance. Yeah. So here's the thing, you know, when I, we started this, this um, 
this conversation, I was saying that all the people who are here have superpowers. All the people who are here are called for sacred entrepreneurship. This is not about, you know, this is about something sacred that's from your soul, that's from your heart. And in order for you to really act or listen, you need to trust that what you're receiving is real. And in order for you to trust, you need to open up. And when I talk about multidimensional guidance, is that, you know, you have your guides, your guardians, your allies, benevolent light beings, your higher self. They all supporting you, trying to communicate with you. And what I feel in the audience here is that things are just circling here. They're not coming inside. Like so many of you are just thinking and thinking and thoughts and thoughts and thoughts. And you are not emptying yourself. So when you start trusting, you can make yourself hollow and make the decision that you open to receiving the information that comes through. And when you do that, you also can choose to fully be present and receive that guidance and trust that guidance. When you're able to sit in stillness and in the knowingness that you are a multidimensional being, you will be able, slowly at first, if you have never done it, because, you know, when you haven't or you, you think you cannot or it's only anybody else who does it, you're not actually able to open up to your full powers. And I want to invite each and every one of you to know that you have access to that when it comes to stillness and trust and surrender, really opening up and, and deciding that, you know, you take yourself out of the equation. This is not about your little brain, although the brain is a supercomputer. But if you truly believe that you have a purpose, a soul mission, your soul ideas are not going to come from your brain. They're going to come from your soul. And your guides are supporting you. And, you know, your higher source, energy God, are supporting you. And you need to create space to receive that information because it's available to you. And that's why, you know, you, you see people sometimes, it's like, oh, oh, you know, I'm going to give you an example. Um, I love Don Miguel Ruiz. And as I continued my spiritual journey, it was like, I really am asking to work with him because I love him. And he has changed my life so much. Like, I don't, I, I don't know him personally, I didn't. And, um, and this year, I'm going to be speaking with him at the Gathering of the Shamans in Sedona. And if I had used my brain, there is no way that that could have been possible. Like, I haven't written a, you know, six-year number one bestseller book that's on the New York time list for the last, I don't know, 10 years. Like, the four agreement has not left the number one spot in like 10 years. Like, how, how could I be with him on stage? But because I went from the multidimensional guidance where it was like, you said, I have a soul purpose, I have a mission, and I'm here, you know, to bring healing, love, creativity to humanity. 
this is how I want to do it. And I, I just let it go. And, but you understand what I'm saying? There's no way. I'm not old enough. I haven't written enough books. I, haven't, I don't have the connections to be able to speak with Don Madame Ruiz. And yeah, it's happening. So when you take control or, oh, this is how it's going to be, when you take it out of the way, you allow the universe to give it to you. And I call that unconditional receiving. No conditions. Unconditional receiving and trust. That's how I, I really do my multidimensional receiving, multidimensional guidance. It comes from everywhere. Synchronicity, simple destinies, coincidences, divine collaborations. You, you know, you somewhere, you know, buying coffee and, you know, you speak to somebody and, and do your next business partner. That's how it happens. When you trust and when you open up to receiving your multidimensional guidance that is available to you. I love this. I love this. And this has been absolutely, my path has unfolded in that way. Like, you know, years ago when I was in corporate and finance, there's no way that I could have possibly imagined things that would have happened to put me on this path. No way. Not my wildest dreams or wildest logical imaginings, you know? Um, so this, this is so big. This is so important for all of us because there is a larger plan. I, you know, this is kind of coming back to, to something that I thought about a little earlier in your talk. And, and there's this larger plan that is so much more amazing than any of us could possibly know or understand. And we are woven in to it and we are woven in alongside one another in this plan. So when we open up to that multidimensional guidance, as you say, gives us access to that and yeah there's yeah. no yeah no logical thinking brain plan that can get us there yeah for people who are uh skeptical skeptical uh, because sometimes we think uh, being an entrepreneur is, is about force right it's it's about power it's not about force i'm going to give you another example um, where, you know, let's say you have a, um, you know, what's the stage before the butterfly? Caterpillar. So let's say you're a caterpillar. If that's where you are right now. And, and if you don't listen to multidimensional guidance, what you're going to do is like, I'm going to be the best caterpillar and, you know, with the best body and the best abs and, you know, get on the caterpillar pile and you're just climbing, you know, and then you get on top of the caterpillar pile and it's like, well, that's not your destiny. You're supposed to be a butterfly, right? But the caterpillar, there's no way the caterpillar could, doesn't even know what is a butterfly, right? Yeah. And it focuses on, yeah, I'm going to be the best and, I'm going to do this. I'm going to run a marathon, caterpillar. And there is no way a caterpillar knows that it's going to become a butterfly. So that's the analogy that I want you to take home when you find yourself, because, you know, we live in the world, then you start finding yourself, you know, trying to operate from your brain instead of listening, instead of opening, instead of surrendering. And then, of course, you need to do what you need to do. I'm not saying don't take action, but you need to take divinely inspired action because every action is actually not inspired or powerful. And that's how you become the butterfly. And the butterfly is the larger plan. It's your destiny. It's, it's where you are in flow. Like you could be working 24 hours or just one hour, but you're still going where you need to go. That's flow. That's, that's you enjoy. 
you are doing your passion and your part in the larger plan. There is no suffering there. If you find yourself suffering, you're operating from fear. Beautiful. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very true. So how, I have one more question for you before we open it up yeah. for Q and A for everybody. How can trust bring us holistic and ultimate success? Mm. Mm. So I believe that success is a place where you are in freedom, you are in flow, you are in love, you are in joy. And, and that is preceded by opening up to your purpose, to who you are, to why you're here, but from that place of the heart and the knowingness, not what somebody else tells you, not what the news tells you, not what anybody tells you, but what you open up to knowing and receiving. And when you're in that place where you know that you are on your path and you're doing what you need to do, it is incredible. This is where every other space in your life opens up your relationships your friendships your health your wealth everything opens up because you are open to receiving you are open to showing up as the real you not the small you and this is holistic success where everything is in flow and it's a feeling that is indescribable. And it can only come when you are opening up to trusting who you are, why you are here. Only when you trust that you are worthy of your divine life in the larger plan, you're not a mistake. And if you chose entrepreneurship, it's not a mistake. Just taking a breath, knowing that you have access to all of this, when it gets hard. Yeah. So. Very powerful. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Thank you for all that you have shared here so far. So, so much truth here. I really, really love what you're, what you're sharing. And I know that you have a um, fantastic gift for everybody. So I would like to announce your mm -hmm. gift here before we go over to the Q&A. And it's the Shakti Fire Meditation Journey. Yeah. Sounds very powerful. Would you like to say a few more words about that? Yeah, it's, uh, it's a powerful journey. Um, you know, three things that happen when we have our trust broken um fear shame guilt and you know some people call that the shadow um but i wanted to name them and in this journey we are going to go and use the shakti fire it's to catalyze those places and ignite your full power as a fearless entrepreneur and so it's a shamanic energetic cosmic journey um, with brain entrainment and um, so do the journey when you're really ready to go there because this is a no holds barrel journey it's very powerful give yourself time because um, you know we're going to be going there on the journey <laughs> okay <laughs> beautiful it's beautiful Okay. Yeah. So for everyone who's on live, I just put the link to claim Marie's free gift in the chat. So go ahead and click on it now. Make sure you claim that gift. And then for everyone who's watching this as a recording, just scroll down below this video screen and you will see the link right there. 
um, to claim her, her free gift. So thank you for offering that to us, Marie. Much appreciated. Okay, so let me open up the floor for Q&A here. And so everyone, if you would like to come on either by video or audio and ask Marie a question, you can just click on the raise hand icon. There should be a hand icon there on your screen. And if you don't wanna be as visible, that's fine. Um, you can just put your question in the chat as well. And so Tina, I am gonna bring you over. I see you raising your hand. Hi, can you see Hi, me? Hi, Tina. Welcome. Hi. Hi, can you see me okay? Yes, we can see okay. you and hear you. Great. So um, there's a lot, a lot in what has been said that's so dear to my heart. Um, I think a question I have is for those people around me who uh, worry about me uh, because I've been through different uh, times of depression, but when I emerge, I learn so much and I take that knowledge forward and share uh, very helpful, I think, <laughs> self-help skills for people to um, ground their emotion. We talked about opening up to um, the, the uh, feelings in the body and how I use it now with my biology background to connect to the earth and to release and open up. To the knowledge but my question is for those people around me who identify me in certain ways because of ex episodes of depression how do I um, move forward without um, without a lot of resistance from people I mean as I open up to what I know intuitively which I am uh, um, appreciating now I wonder uh, how I sort of self-protect from what I think will be quite strong resistance from other people around me. Mm, okay. May I, before we even go forward, offer you a little reframe? May I offer you a reframe? Uh -huh. Reframe. Okay. Reframe, reframe, yes. So, so if you notice, your words which is part of the awareness i'm talking about you are already declaring that people are going to be resistant and it's going to be bad and you're going to need to protect yourself and like and why are you creating that reality <laughs> right yeah yeah like, so so you decide who you mm. are Right. and who you associate with and and the people that you are in vibrational alignment with will come everybody is not supposed to love you no if they don't choose to which is their sovereignty right sure so nobody defines who you are and you are not defining yourself by reacting to what you think people are thinking about you. Yeah. And that, really I, I really hear what you're saying because I heard something the other day, I think, on another speaker, which said, um, what someone else thinks is not my business. I really yeah. like that. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> but you see how, which is what I mean by a lot of us operate from fear, which is you mm. literally bracing like, okay, I have this knowledge I want to share, but I already know people are going to be resistant. They're not going to love me and I need to protect myself and how can I make myself be loved? But it's like, what? And I think the other side to it is that I tend to protect others right from childhood, very, very aware of so, other people. So I need to let that go. Stop trying so to... So here's protect. the thing. Mm -hmm. Well... Who are you to decide that they need protection? So yeah. unless somebody asks you, please protect me, just let them be on their journey because you don't even know what they're going through, right? Sometimes sure. it's, a, it's a distraction. Mm. So we don't want to feel what we feel, then we're going to go and protect those people. Like, you don't know 
what they feel, right? Yeah. Right. So it's important to to be on your journey and allow people to be in their journey mm. and releasing reactions like um, like just taking it off throwing that box away of, oh somebody will not love me well that's fine right okay. but do i love myself mm -hmm. do i trust myself yeah Am I aligned with what I say I'm doing? That's your journey. That's your job. Yeah? Yes, I hear that. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're welcome. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you, Tina, for, for being visible and for asking your question. Yeah. Thank Have you. a wonderful day. Thanks a lot. Well done. <laughs> yes, I'm encouraging. I, visibility is such an important part of being an entrepreneur. So I'm encouraging everybody to be visible and yeah, raise your hand. Don't be shy. Um, okay. So we have a couple questions in the chat. One question from Erhard. Um, what can you recommend to have better focus under a meditation and not get so caught up in the mind when meditating? Mm. Mm -hmm. That's a, that's a question that I get asked a lot. Number one thing I want to tell everybody, your brain's job is to have thoughts. You will have thoughts. As you get experience as a meditator, the gap between your thoughts will get longer and longer and longer, meaning when you first start meditating, it's like, oh, wow, it's hot. Uh, da, 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 da. And then after a while, it's like, it's hot. No thought. Wow, I need to go get gas in my car. No thought. So you will have thoughts, right? The important thing, the answer is do not get attached to the thought realize that it's just a thought and that's what your brain does it's like it's like somebody saying well i really want my heart to stop beating while i'm meditating because i really want to be focused it's like no your heart is not going to stop <laughs> that's what it does right so when you realize that you can you can let go of i'm doing it wrong and i'm thinking so and i'm going to give you an example of how you let go of a thought uh i think you know, most people here are women, right? Mm -hmm. and, and maybe you cook. And let's say you have a thought, I want to bake a cake for my friend's birthday. It just comes. When you let that thought go, it's like, oh, okay, I'll do it. And then you let it go. But you hang on to the thought when it's like, I want to bake a cake for my friend's birthday. Oh, wow. Okay, I'm out of flour. I need to go to the store and get some flour. Oh, the other day I saw that flour was on sale at Trader Joe's. And, um, mm, okay, maybe I'm going to use margarine and not butter. And, uh, ooh, I should add some strawberries, huh? Like, that's being attached to the thought of baking a cake, right? Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Instead of just... I'm going to bake a cake. Fine. You're going to bake a cake, but don't be like, you know, I'm going to, oh yeah, I'm going to need to do this. And, and, and then I have to, you know, the, oh, my oven. Oh, I have to like, that's being attached to the thought. So everybody is a successful meditator when you do not attach to thoughts. And when you realize that you will have thoughts. So you start there. And then you notice, it's just being like mindful, right? Because meditation is actually allowing you to see what's happening in the back of your mind. It's not coming in the you know, forefront. Like, oh, wow, this is what my thoughts are, right? And then you start noticing, am I positive? Am I negative about myself? And so it's about awareness. It's about noticing. It's about observing. It's not about not having thoughts. I don't even know <laughs> You know, of course, you know, after a while, you know, you have fewer and fewer thoughts, but that's where you start. 
Yeah, thank you. I love that. I love it. And and it's I, I think, you know, we're set up with this very unrealistic expectation when we go into meditation that you're not supposed to have any thoughts because maybe once somebody has attained the highest level of, you know, being a yogi or being in a, you know, in an ashram or something like that, then maybe you don't have any thoughts or very few. But you know, when you're starting out, it's not gonna be yeah, that way. Right? Yeah. You're just starting. <laughs> And the brain does have thoughts. That's what it does. So, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Love that answer. Um, so Karen is asking Marie, as a doctor, could you speak to the topic of pharmaceutical pain suppression as it relates to receiving messages from the body? That's very interesting. I don't know if that's outside of the. I'm sorry. Pharma topic here, but she's asking about the topic of pharmaceutical pain suppression as it relates to receiving messages from the body. So I guess if we're not getting those messages because we're taking medications that are suppressing the symptoms, um, you know, I don't know, I don't know exactly what her question is, <laughs> but do you have any, do you have well, any thoughts on that topic you would want sure to share? That... Okay. So, so pain it's not the only form of receiving a message, right? Did you hear? Yeah, I can hear so, you. So if, let's say you had surgery, for example, and, and you still have pain and you need to take pain medicine, uh, it doesn't mean that when you have a wound, you're not gonna feel that pain. This is like a spiritual, energetic, emotional pain, right? Right. So, so that, that has nothing to do with receiving messages from your body. And the other thing is, you also have to really be honest um, uh, with yourself, which is why are you using the pen? Are you using the pen medicine with integrity or are you using it to escape, right? I see that Wilhelmina is trying to explain what the person is trying to say. Um, Okay, yeah. so if we like, were to the pain, I would, but having pain medicine doesn't mean you're repressing. It means you are alleviating your pain, right? That, that is a, a totally different thing. That's why I, you know, I took the example of somebody who, um, you know, they, they broke their back, they broke their ankle, like, should, like something happened right? That is making you have pain. Mm -hmm. So you're treating that pain. This is not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is when you have a wound from that place, can you receive the message from that? So it's okay to treat your pain because the body actually has pain receptors where when you take pain medicine, that's where the pain medicine goes. We get in trouble when we don't have pain and we take pain medicine, that is like the problem, right? So question is how do you use your pharmaceuticals? Is it to ex you know, escape or is it because you actually have something? Because pain is a sim it's like if you have fever, you're going to treat your fever. If you have, you know, like it's, it's a symptom of something, right? So don't not treat your pain because then you're not going to hear your body. It's the wounds that we are suppressing. Yeah. Okay. I think that you get it. I was just giving different yeah. example. Yeah. And make sure you. that we don't give a bad reputation like pharmaceuticals has kind of a judgment mm -hmm. to it however there are people who actually do have pain and you know when you have cancer that pain can make you crazy so unless you really experience pain you cannot just oh yeah they're taking pharmaceuticals or whatever right like if you want to be functional and you have something then you actually need to treat that pain so you can be present if not all you think about is the pain yeah mm -hmm. yes that makes so much sense and yeah. 
Yeah. And I'm, I'm thinking too about, you know, if someone has chronic pain, right? That might be, you know, if I have chronic knee pain, for example, it might be a sign of something spiritual, but I might, t- but I might need to take, you know, Advil or something or something to cover it up so that I can operate fully, but I can also do the spiritual work around what that knee pain might mean on a deeper level. Absolutely. And, and so again, taking pain medicine will not prevent you from receiving messages, right? No, it will not. But you have to be willing to really look at yourself with integrity. Why are you taking this pain medicine? Is it to hide, to escape, to numb? Because a lot of people numb themselves up. Is that why you're doing it? Or is it because you, know, you want to actually operate at a higher level? Decrease inflammation, right? Yeah. So that will, not, that will not shut you off. What we do is we ourselves shut ourselves down from receiving that. You know, we numb ourselves up, we hide, you know, we do. It's not the pain medicine. It's the decisions that we make that. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So you always have the option to do your spiritual work, you know, no matter where you are, no matter what substance you might take for whatever reason, you can still do spiritual work. Because it's a journey, right? Maybe today you're like, oh, I need to take, you know, this to whatever. But remembering that you are on a journey and you can always start over. You can always start over. So really releasing judgment, releasing all that and just starting where you are. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, Linda is raising her hand. So Linda, let me bring you over here. Mm-hmm. And Marie, how are you on time? Are you able to stay on for maybe 10 more minutes or do you need to go now? Cause we're at an hour. Uh, just maybe five minutes. Okay. I'm have to go and- yeah. I know you're, yeah. you have important things yeah. to do there. Okay. Yeah. Hi Linda. Okay. Welcome. Hi Linda. Welcome. Hi. So I love Marie, she, Marie, you are amazing. Um, it's so obvious that you have been on the path for a very long time, or you've been here many times before. <laughs> but my, my question is, um, I have uh, kind of a chronic, my stomach is my and always has been my loudest companion throughout my life. And as I've gotten older, it's gotten louder. And I've been a meditator for a long time. But what I found was that as I got older and um, stress increased and just life in general, uh, (laughs) that appears as you get older, um, it's very difficult to sit with that discomfort. I mean, it's not with me all the time. But my question is, what, I've never had anybody be able to answer this question. So um, how do you, what are, what are techniques or what are blockages or, or what information can you provide about sitting with pain that you don't want to suppress, but you, when you sit, all you can feel is the pain. And you can't, I cannot get distance from it. Like I'm not able to be, well, I guess I am in, to some extent observing it because I know I'm having it. But it's, it's very much consuming rather than um, calming. You understand my question? So your first answer is that the length that it took 
to express what you just expressed is that you haven't actually asked the question that needs to be asked. And so that... <laughs> What's that question? <laughs> <coughs> so, <coughs> excuse me. Um, there's a lot happening and yeah. ask a simple question. That's what I'm going to invite you to do. That is clear, concise, without explaining the context, the just, yeah. Okay. Try that. So Try to do that. you mean to me or to you? It's for you, right? Like, this is not about me. This is about you. Well, but I, the I more can clear ask, you are. Yeah, I, I know the question. I just was trying to articulate it yeah. to you. But I have not yeah, gotten. Try again. I have not. <laughs> it's okay. okay. Just try again so we see what comes out, right? It's, it's a journey. Try again to ask me what you want to ask me. Oh, okay. Um, how do you sit with sensation from your body that, uh, that is not quiet enough to allow you to um, observe? So how do you sit with, sit to Sensation. do what, to meditate? Yes. So, so what you're saying, I'm just going to repeat that so we know we're addressing the question. So what you're saying is you have this pain in your stomach that is painful and it's making it hard for you to actually meditate. Is that what you're saying? I suppose that you could no, say it like, that yeah, way. Yeah, let's clarify it so I answer the question that you want because there are two things here, right? You're feeling something and, and that thing is there, which is your stomach thing. And you want to meditate, but you cannot meditate because the thing is too painful for you to meditate. So yeah, how can a you... It's a, it's, so a, how, um, it's a reaction from the, um, there's a nerve, the vagus nerve that goes up into your ears. Yeah, no, I know the vagus nerve. I'm just asking, yeah. is and so question, when that, how can oh, you sit with this thing? Yes, how do, how do you sit with something that's overwhelming? That's, maybe that's the best mm. way to ask. Mm. Yeah, that's, that's a very, very good question. question that many people face in different um, settings that where they know that they're dying and it's very painful and they can see it coming. People with like severe diseases, different types of pains, uh, different infirmities and like a lot of people have those situations where it's like it's unbearable right and so this is the question and thank you for you know going with me and really making it clear for everybody because right. sometimes the questions we ask are not only for us like there's somebody else out there who needs to hear this and when the question is clear then the people who need it will get the answers. And the number one thing that is crucial is accepting. Accepting that this is where we are. This is what's happening to us. But how do you do that? So you accept by deciding that you are going to accept because we get a lot of suffering 
when we resist what is happening to us. So releasing resistance, because the reality is that it is happening. Yeah? Releasing resistance to accepting our reality. When you accept your reality, you are agreeing with yourself that you actually have the power to change it. So here's the thing. When we refuse or we resist, it's from a place of powerlessness. Like if I accept this, it's going to eat me alive and I'm, I'm just going to die or I'm not, you know, I'm going to disappear. But when you accept, that this is where I am, this is where I am, this is where I am. It is so powerful. And then number two, asking this pain, this thing, this overwhelming whatever it is, like what are you here to teach me? What are you here to teach me? Because it's there to teach you something. Well, that's the reason but I you, asked the question. How do you how do you get to the place where you can ask? And so that's a good you, answer. And I'm wondering, how do you get to the place where you can even ask a question? You see what I'm saying? Because well, when you're in is, overwhelm, you 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 have no space to operate in. But what I'm wondering is exactly. that maybe the acceptance needs to be practiced when you're not in overwhelm. As you know, so in order again, to in Linda. Yeah. So basically releasing your brain, trying to explain, trying to understand. You just have to release that. There is no way you will understand why it's happening which well, is I, another I'm, part of it okay but yeah. you just said yeah it's another part said. of it and linda okay, we so need I'm to gonna... respect marie's time here marie is leading a retreat and she was able to join us for yeah. an hour and we're 10 yeah, yeah. i can i can finish this with her yeah yeah i can finish it with her to really help her okay. the thing is that when we have a lot of you know, remember when you first asked your question, there was a lot of explaining, a lot of, and we got to the point where you were able to ask. So overwhelm is, it's actually the result of how we perceive what's happening to us. Since you already know that you are in overwhelm sometimes, you can really, and I'm telling you this, it's possible. You can decide when you accept. There is no need to be overwhelmed. It's like, okay, I know that you're here, and I know that you're here to teach me something, and I'm not ready to listen. I don't want to fight and push it away. I don't want to. And, and just for a few moments, you try it, and then... You know, you see what happens. You, you don't need to explain it. You don't need to understand it because that's where the brain loves and, and the thoughts that come from that can really disempower you and paralyze you where you, you can't do anything else. So then and trust I me, one, it's... What, one yeah, question. One more. To just to clarify, because you said to ask, what is the message? What are you trying to teach me? So yes. how, how is that not being analytical or how, it's what's totally the difference? Not being, it's not being analytical, right? You're not analyzing like, who are you? Why are you, you know, like, why did this happen? Did I refuse to give candy to somebody? Was I a bad person? Like that's trying to understand, right? That's a different where you're not even accepting. It's like, why is this happening to me? Why me? Why, 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 why? Right? Instead, it's like, okay, you're here. Why, are, you know, can you tell me? Can you show me? 
Can you let me hear? I accept, right? That's a different mindset than why I want. Right. Yeah? Make sense? You're really Try amazing. It. Try it. Try it. But from a place of accepting. Well, yeah. you gave it, you gave such a clear answer, and I, I'm going to use what you've taught me. All right. Okay. It's very subtle. It's a very subtle difference from what it I've is. been told. Yeah. But an important one. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Thank All you, right. Linda. Many yeah. blessings to you, Linda. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much, Marie. The dog You're very welcome. <laughs> yes. Hey, yeah. Baby. Beautiful. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, Marie. Uh, we all appreciate you so much. I'll have to send you the notes from the chat because everybody's just saying, Marie is just so amazing. So yeah, thank you for all that you have shared here. It means a lot to all of us. Hi, everybody. Thank you. Have a wonderful I day. I love you. Really connecting, loving yourself. It, it's so crucial. And having compassion, you know? No matter what you have done, you can always forgive yourself. Choose to forgive yourself easily and completely. You don't have to earn your forgiveness. I just had to say that it, it came up like a lot of you are in a place of not forgiving yourself. You don't have to earn it, just do it. Thank you, Marie. Thank you, yeah. thank you. Lots of love right. to you. Blessings to everybody. Lots of love. Bye. Many blessings. Thank to you. Yeah, and so everybody, um, go ahead and join me in just another 45 minutes. We're starting our second interview an hour earlier today than we did all the other days. And we'll be talking to, with Sophia Tom, who is a movement and embodiment coach and a sacred dance artist. She is truly amazing. Um, actually, Marie and Sophia have worked together. And so you're going to love Sophia. So come and join me back here on this Zoom link in just 45 minutes at 12 noon New York time. I hope to see you all again then. Lots of love.